Hello Bakers and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are going to be learning how to create simple wind system inside Unreal Engine 4. Now without further ado, let's roll the intro. I already have a very simple scene set up here for the testing purposes. So as you can see, I have a tree and also a few bushes and a little bit of a grass, but uh, nothing in the scene at the moment is uh, moving or uh, there is like absolutely no wind or anything like that. So what we're going to do is uh, build up a system specifically for that so that we control globally the whole wind and everything that's happening in the scene. The place where we're gonna first start with is uh, gonna be just in a uh, place inside the content browser. We are going to right click and go to our materials and textures. From there, we are going to create a material parameter collection. I'm going to name this MP for material parameter and then wind. We're gonna open this one and we are going to add a scalar parameter which I'm going to leave the default value on zero. And then instead of uh, having parameter name as a scalar, we are going to change it into wind underscore intensity. And we are also going to add a vector parameter, which we are not going to leave as a vector, but instead wind underscore direction. And as uh, default values for both of these parameters, uh, first one, let's set this one for something like blue, because if we leave it uh, on black, this means that there is not going to be any direction. So let's just uh, put some value in order for us when we add the wind to already see the changes in the screen. And also here, I'm going to put it uh, on one, the default value. The first material we are going to uh, add our wind is going to be the grass. So uh, I already opened uh, my master material for the grass and here pretty much uh, I just have the setup that is for the color and uh, everything else. So we just gonna build the wind and uh, where we're gonna start is uh, by typing simple grass wind. So then we're gonna multiply this, which can either type multiply here or hold M and click. And what we're gonna multiply it by is going to be the vertex color. So we would like to have a vertex color, which is controlling our wind. So we're just gonna connect the result to A and then we are going to right click and type vertex color. I'll move that under here and then we can choose which one of the channels from the vertex colors we would like to use uh, on our B parameter. And I'm going to use the red channel. So we're just going to connect it like that. And now what we need to do is to connect our parameter that we just created our material parameter for the wind. So we are going to right click and then we are going to type collection parameter. And here on the side, you can see that uh, at the moment we don't have anything assigned. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to go where our wind parameter is and assign it over here. And then as we have uh, our parameter selected, we need to specify which one of the parameters inside, like the parameter collection inside we would like to use. As you remember, we have our parameter, which is the scalar one, which is wind intensity, and we also have the direction. So uh, for the first one here from the parameter name, I'm going to choose direction, and then I'm going to copy paste it and choose intensity for the second one. So we have one which is direction and the second one which is intensity. So now that we have uh, both of these uh, over here, I'm going to grab the intensity one and the intensity we are just going to first multiply it by one other parameter. And the reason for that is uh, because the initial parameter that we set it up as default value might look great for the grass that uh, we have, but you might have, for example, a smaller grass or something which is larger and you would like to uh, do it on the material instance for that grass. 
uh, and multiply it a little bit and for example intensify it or not so in order not to um, change everything from the global parameter we are going to have this smaller scalar inside which uh, is going to be uh, possible to update it per instance so i'm going to name this uh, wind underscore boost and we are going to leave it on zero and then this one it will go into wind intensity then we are going to create another uh, parameter i'm just going to uh, copy paste this one and we are going to name it wind uh, weight so this one i'm going to leave it on 0 0.2 uh, as default and just gonna plug it into wind weight we are gonna do the same thing for wind speed so just change it wind speed put it over here i'm going to leave it to 0.2 as well and the last one which is for the additional world position uh, offset we're just going to uh, copy one of uh, those parameters and i'm going to name this world position offset uh we're gonna leave it for now on zero and then we can uh, always change it uh, at the end so let's uh connect everything that uh, we have at the moment uh set it up so we are going to get our multiplier and put it into the world position offset apply save and let's have a look how exactly everything uh, is looking currently so you can see that uh, now everything uh, we have wind and everything uh, looks uh, kind of okay -ish. so let's uh, see exactly all the parameters that we created how uh, after that when we have the material instance for our grass is uh, influencing and how exactly we can influence and change that. I just pulled uh, my material instance. This is for the grass material. And this is with all the parameters that we have at the moment. So we can see that you have our wind boost and as well speed, weight and all the other stuff. So for example, if you would like uh, this grass to have less wind, we can just make it 0.5. So it will be once we so it will be less wavy and then if we want a lot of wind we can always make it like five or something crazy uh, as well uh, we can always move the speed uh, and some of the other parameters that uh, we have now also uh, this is from the material instance uh, the parameters that we are changing and here you can see that uh, the wind boost I leave it on one so this means that uh, if it's on one it's going to take uh, exactly the same parameters that we have over here into our uh, default values so from the material parameter collector that we created we can also control our wind intensity so if i change this value let's say to two you can see that uh, it becomes uh, a lot windier and if i go back to one it will be less okay uh now we have uh, everything working for our intensity now we need to do our direction and connect that one to our material. So where do we start uh, adding our direction? Uh, as you remember, we added this uh, small wind uh, node over here, which is for the world position. We did this because uh, living in on zero, we don't have any sort of a direction uh, added to our wind. So I'm just going to delete that one. And this is the slot where we're gonna put our direction for wind. But before uh, plugging it in like this, we actually need to have some sort of a control. And the first thing that we're gonna do, I'm going to copy paste the intensity one more time over here. So uh, we are going to use that one. And for the directional node, uh, before going directly and plugging it, we need to normalize it. Uh, normalizing it is uh, going to make sure um, it's you can see it as a check. So it's uh, going to make sure that uh, if we have, uh, as you remember, we have this wheel where we can select different colors, but uh, we can select actually values that are higher than one. So in order for uh, Unreal to make sure that everything works properly, we uh, need to uh, check it and we're going to normalize it. And this will make sure that all the values and everything uh, stays correct. So uh, we're gonna get a normalize and then for the wind intensity, we are going to multiply it over here. So here on the bottom, we are going to create uh, one more parameter, which uh, I'm going to name wind influence. And uh, we are going to plug this into B. So once we have those two, then we just multiply those together. Now 
I'll move it a little bit on the side just to organize it a little bit better. So what we can do is uh, just grab this one and plug it in here. Uh, this will already work uh, properly and uh, we can see uh, some sort of a direction into our grass. So uh, now if we come over here and we uh, change the direction so you can see that uh, there will be wind like blowing from one side or uh, from another. So uh, this already works but what we can do is um, especially if we go with a higher intensity let me just uh, show you that. So if we go some sort of uh, let's say three over here and then we pick uh, let's say this direction so you can see that uh, how the grass uh, starting to overlap on top of each other. So this looks a little bit odd. And uh, of course the intensity is um, too high as well, but uh, we can improve that and have a little bit of a variety over there. So uh, what we're gonna do, yeah, I will just come back to our material. So before uh, connecting it here, I'm just going to pull it a little bit more to the back to have more space. We are going to type break and we are going to break it into a float to component and then what we are gonna do is uh, grab the red channel and we are gonna make float 3 so we want those two to be exactly the same so this is the green uh, this is the red and the green channel and then for uh, our blue channel we are going to use uh, the wind intensity this way as you can imagine, now we have uh, our direction, which is uh, influencing part of uh, the wind, but we also have the wind intensity, which uh, influences uh, one of the other channels. So this way we can have a little bit more variation into our end result. And now we're going to plug this into our offset. Let's apply, save it, and let's see uh, what we have. So you can see that uh, now it goes a little bit more uh, randomly and overall looks uh, better than before. All right, so uh, now let's uh, see how exactly we can control this. So one way will be we can just uh, open these values over here and let's put everything on zero. And let's just uh, say we want to pull out the red channel So this is how you can create a simple wind for your scenes, which is controlled by a global parameter for all of your vegetation inside the scene. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss more of my tutorials and leave a comment down below if you would like me to do other type of materials. Thank you for joining me today and see you next time.